So, hello everybody, my name is Amit. I am from Yarok Ballet NGO, meaning Green at Heart. We are an NGO that uh, was formed to protect Haifa's nature. And uh, Green at Heart means that we believe that the heart of Haifa should be kept green and it should be kept uh, natural. What I'll be telling you today is about uh, the project, how it started, how it developed, and what's our future plans. And of course, tomorrow, you all know, uh, we're going together uh, to create uh, a new hiking trail. It's not new, actually. I'll talk about this also later. Um, and we'll work together uh, with other volunteers that are coming. I hope that uh, there will be many more people coming. We'll divide you into groups. And uh, I'll give you more specific uh, explanations about the hike tomorrow at the end of this lecture. So, the name of this lecture is Saving Urban Nature. This is what Yarok Bolev NGO is doing. And we created uh, two things that we'll talk about later. One is this group called the uh, Carmelists. And the other one is uh, Haifa Wadi Israel. This is what we're doing tomorrow, and this is who will join the hike tomorrow. Это именно то, чем занимается их организация. А также у них есть еще одно подразделение «Кармелис», которое и э, один проект «Хайфа Валистейл». Это, в принципе, то, чем мы будем заниматься. Это люди, которые ведут и присоединятся к нам. So, how it all started? Uh, in 2010, there was the beginning of all this uh, happening. In 2010, the biggest NGO in Israel for nature protection, the Society for uh, Protection of Nature in Israel, called SPNI Short, they joined together with a very uh, distinguished uh, person here in Haifa, Guy Shaha, which uh, they worked together uh, to establish a new project uh, to save the wadis of Haifa. Wadi is the Arab word for any valley that has water, a water stream in winter and is dry, completely dry in summer. And this is most of the streams that you have in Israel. Most of the streams are actually wadis, meaning they do not flow most of the year. They flow only when it's raining. And uh, in uh, 2010, uh, as part of this project, Guy also developed his own project, his own student project named Haifa Trail. Значит, этот проект начался в 2010 году, когда крупная израильская неправительственная организация э, объединила свои силы с очень известным э, человеком, защитником природы, э, Омри Шахером, они создали проект защиты Вади. Вади это арабское слово, которое означает э, дали, э, долину, э, с, не, прощения, долину ущелья с водой. Uh, но в большинстве в Азии вода только uh, зимой, летом они высохшие. Вот. Также uh, в 2010 году, в декабре, uh, этот uh, Гай Шаха, да, то есть тоже человек, который с ними работает, он тоже создал, uh, тоже создал свою организацию специально для студентов, которая называется Хайфа Трейл. So, what was the Haifa Trail? It was actually an urban hiking path through the street and through these wadis, these streams in nature. Haifa uh, Trail is a paved road по улицам Хайфы and также по этим wadis. So this is the map of Haifa, and this is the conceptual trail. It's not actually marked in Haifa, it's marked on maps. And it's 70 kilometers, as this article says, and uh, today many people are already walking it, uh, if it's the local tourists or tourists from abroad. Значит, на этой карте вы можете видеть концептуальную, как концептуально должен выглядеть этот этот тропа. На в Хайфе она никак не отмечена, она есть только на карте. Люди на 70 километров, и но уже очень все равно очень очень многие туристы и как и израильтяне, так и иностранцы путешествуют по ней. So a few years later, after that. About four years later, uh, I initiated the first expedition 
to really try and hike this uh, trail. Here you have a chair here. So this first expedition set out in January. It's uh, in the peak of the Israeli winter and it was a very nice weather, completely dry, about uh, 25 degrees, perfect for uh, hiking in nature. В 2014 году он организовал первую экспедицию для того, чтобы полностью пройти Хайфа Трейл. Это было зимой, было необычайно, очень необычайно для этого времени. Было сухо, было 25 градусов, очень хорошо, они очень хорошо для таких путешествий. So this is how it looked like. This is me on the corner, and this is the first group that joined. A few people joined just for sections. And in total, we were about 20 people that came and hiked. We also slept inside Haifa. We slept in the urban region. We put the, t the tents in, and we just uh, stayed for the night. Uh, it was with two sleeping sleeping nights. And some of you might recognize a few of uh, the English speakers in Haifa. So, uh, after we hiked this uh, first hike, we decided we would, like to, we would like to continue hiking, but with more nature. So we altered this original path that uh, was conceived by Guy Shachal, the Haifa Trail, and we named it Haifa Nature Trail. We thought it might be possible to have one urban trail that goes through the city, through the urban streets, and a bit through nature, and to have another hike, another trail that goes mostly through nature. После этой экспедиции они решили, что, возможно, стоит сделать такую такую тропу, которая проходила бы больше по природе, значит, чтобы была одна тропа, которая и по городу и по природе, и вторая, которая больше по природе. Вот они это сделали и назвали ее Хайфа Нейчер Трейл. So three months later, we already set out for the first expedition of this new trail. So this was our publicity in Pesach, Passover, and we invited people for four days this time, uh, with three nights uh, in the field. And you can see the nature of Haifa is really amazing. It's full of wildlife and flora and fauna, and uh, the vegetation is just uh, astonishing. It changes throughout the year. This is a, a, a hyena. I don't know how many of you have ever seen a hyena, there is one last family living here in Haifa. And the hyena is, if any, anyone haven't seen it, it's like from the Lion King. You have these three dogs or seven dogs. Actually, it's uh, more related to cats than dogs. It's uh, biologically more related to cats. Uh, the one that does. <coughs> yeah, next one. So, right after this hike, we decided uh, we're ready to establish a Facebook group. So, we opened this group and we had for at least half a year almost no registrations. We were about 50 people, very small group, and we also opened a new page. We called this uh, path that before that we called it Haifa Nature Trail. Now we wanted to change the name uh, to distinguish it from Haifa Trail. So we called it the Wadis Trail, Haifa Wadis Trail. And Wadis, it's something we really believe should be a part of this name, a part of the Haifa culture, because it combines the Arabic origins of all the, the these Wadis in Haifa have originally uh, Arabic names and the Arabs were the first to hide within them and we want to continue this legacy. So what is the Carmelist? if you ask yourself. Uh, you, you heard before about Yarok Balev NGO, which is the NGO. The NGO is just, uh, for now, 11 members. So it's a very, very small group 
of the people that are really committed and volunteering day by day. And this is the larger group of volunteers, and uh, it's a very large group, and we hope to open new branches of this NGO. Uh, we already got uh, this week a request from Hadera. I don't know if you heard. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we want to, to use all this uh, collaborative work to really preserve nature together, because it's the interest of all of us. Значит, есть и говорить о Тарме, есть группа, это какая-то группа, которая занимается этим волонтерством на ежедневной основе. Я его отправляю, это более широкая группа для людей, которые тоже хотят помочь своей природе Хайфа. И недавно они, они сейчас получили просьбу для того, чтобы открыть свое отделение в Хаде. So I heard that many of you studied in the Technion, and in the Technion there is no lecture without a graph. So this is a graph for all of you that come from the Technion. Uh, so you'll be happy to see that there are numbers and uh, axes, uh, so enjoy it. That was the last one for today. Uh, today we're about 2,200 uh, members in this uh, Facebook group, but it's not just a Facebook group. These are real activists, all residents of this region of Haifa and the surroundings, and most of them we know personally because they came to our hikes, events, and contributed something to preserve Haifa's nature. Так, для тех из нас, кто технионик, кто привык видеть э, таб, э, графики, вот, нам дали график, но сегодня, сегодня не совсем соответствует действительности, потому что уже в группе порядка двух, двух тысяч человек э, на сегодняшний день. Э, это действительно люди, которых они знают, которых они видели в лицо, которые приходят, которые живут в районе Хайфа и в местности. То есть, между... So after establishing the Facebook groups, we also uh, established the, the project of Haifa Wild History and we wanted to make it bigger and more meaningful. So meaningful would be to connect it to the Israeli network of trails. I don't know if you heard about it, but in Israel uh, it's the country with the highest density of hiking trails per square kilometer or per unit of area. And the Haifa Wild Trail is expected to be the densest place on earth uh, with hiking trails. This is uh, what is, I think it's already there. I think we're really close to have the densest region in the world for hiking paths. Также в 2014 году они решили присоединить Haifa Wadi Trail к общей системе израильских пешеходных дорожек. В принципе, Израиль является страной с наибольшей плотностью пешеходных дорог для пешеходных прогулок в мире и если говорить о конкретно о Хайфе и Хайфа в Адистрен, то в принципе вот этот конкретно район скорее всего место, сам, место с наиболее большим отношением пешеходных дорожек в площади. So what we achieved until now it's uh, what's the main uh, route that goes around Хайфа it goes all through nature it's only a few connecting uh, paths through roads, but mostly it's about 90% through nature. And it's something unbelievable. We did not believe this, uh, that we can achieve this. A 90% trail that, that goes 90% in nature in Haifa. This is something unbelievable. I was born in Haifa, I was raised in Haifa my whole life. I was hiking in the nature of Haifa. And still, today, I cannot believe that we achieved this. It's a trail that goes mostly in nature, about 90%. And we did statistics about it for all the Technion people. So, next. And this is the colors that you will see of the trail. As of today, you have only the two lines, the green and the red, because the, the third line has uh, intellectual property uh, problems. Uh, we're still uh, debating this with uh, the, the Nature Protection of Israel, the SPNI. And we hope one day they will adopt this trail as part of the national uh, trail system and we'll have the third stripe. As of today, you have the red and the green. Next. Feel free to talk. <laughs> потому что синий проезд проблемы с интеллектуальной собственностью, сейчас они пытаются разрешить это с правительственной организацией. So this is the city of Haifa, mostly it's neighborhoods. So if you look uh, from an airplane, 
you will not see all the nature. You will see mostly the treetops and a lot of buildings. What we managed to do is to give you the experience of hiking inside the city without feeling most of the time that you are inside the city. You are going inside this valley, uh, which is a very deep valley, and you don't see the buildings in most of the way. You really see the sea and you see nature. Они смогли, несмотря на то, что, вот, как вы видите, в принципе, если смотрите из космоса на Хайфу, это вы можно видеть только деревья и крыши домов, они смогли сделать так, что на протяжении большей части маршрута дома не видны, вы, в принципе, путешествуете вроде как и по городу, но в то же время совершенно по природе. Это совершенно что-то невероятное. Он еще говорил, что 90% этих пешеходных дорожек проходят по природе, не по природе. So this is really how it looks like. This is the nature of Хайфа. And tomorrow you're going in a, in a, a newly explored uh, territory that many, many years no one walked inside that place. And if you would like to do the whole trail, we're doing it twice a year, about twice a year, in uh, Passover in uh, April, and in the second Jewish holiday in uh, about October. It's called Sukkot. Uh, мы увидели те места, в принципе, куда мы завтра пойдем, туда э, очень мало кто уходит. А, но если мы хотим пойти на полную прогулку, да, все 70 километров, то они делают это два раза в год на фест And about two years ago we formed the NGO. We registered the NGO. Why we did it? What, what, what was the purpose of registering an NGO? So the objectives are, of our NGO are to make the urban nature publicly accessible, which is not today, as of today. Raise awareness to urban nature protection, which as of today, there is not a lot of awareness for nature protection. Increase nature's value as a public asset. Today, nature is looked upon as just a construction site. Uh, real estate owners would like to build as many possible uh, uh, housing units per uh, unit of area. And we would like to change the concept that this public asset has a value to the public, to each one of us. And for you, if you just come for a short time to Haifa, uh, and it has many, many aspects uh, for livelihood in Haifa. Uh, we create uh, infrastructures for ecological activity, which is the trails. We do other online platforms. We create tools for people to use. Uh, we expand the scope of uh, community-based nature protection act activism. It means that uh, we would like to see more and more communities and we are helping the communities that are already establishing other NGOs around Haifa. We are helping them uh, by consulting and by giving real help when they need it. And we improve re residents' life quality, not just protecting nature, also uh, we, look, we take a look a closer look at all the uh, sustainability aspects. Living in a city, it's the most sustainable way of living in Israel. Israel is a very dense place. So we encourage that and we would like to see more of this urbanism ideas. Uh, the concepts of urbanism are not well implemented in Haifa and we would like to see more implementation of these concepts and we are working on that par in parallel to nature protection. We develop sustainable ecotourism in Israel, so it's the hiking, and uh, we'll see in the end uh, more ideas. Uh, значит, uh, значит, для чего они создали эту неправительственную организацию? Во-первых, для того, чтобы сделать uh, uh, городскую природу более доступной для общей публики. Во-вторых, для того, чтобы поднять uh, чтобы увеличить сознание людей по поводу защиты городской природы, для того, чтобы увеличить ценность природы как, как нашей общей собственности, для того, чтобы создать инфраструктуру для экологической, для экологической деятельности, увеличить вовлеченность сообществ в защиту природы для того, чтобы улучшить качество жизни горожан, для того, чтобы создать самопри... самодостаточный периодический туризм.
and how we do it. It's very important not just to know what we're doing, it's to know also how we're doing it. So uh, we have full transparency in our NGO, everything is public. All the information is public and this is the reason why we're recording this lecture today. We, we got a request this morning from uh, the USA. Uh, one of the group members would like to see this lecture and she was not able to join us online. So uh, we're recording this, the people could see it later on and there is no secrecy in our organization. Everything is publicly available. People can know everything that we've done and what we're planning to do. Positive activism, uh, we're not so much in favor of uh, protests. We do sometimes have to work uh, against the authorities, but it's not really against. This is just the system, this is how it works in Israel. The, legislation, the legislative system in Israel uh, made the, the, uh, the system to, to work that you have to object to construction plans if you would like to put your opinion. So we put our opinion uh, in the formal way of objections, but we don't support uh, large-scale uh, uh, protests, anarchism. We do not believe in this. We believe that positive activism, doing good, would really uh, benefit better uh, the public and our goals as well. We minimize our environmental impact. It means that all our hikes are accessible with public transportation. Uh, we do not uh, consume uh, enormous amounts of paper. We really try to minimize all our working standards to, to minimize the environmental impact out of them. Uh, and we are open to any person. It means that uh, it doesn't matter if you have any disability, if you're a really annoying person, we accept all of you. And, we really, and sometimes people are trying to get to the limit, but there is no limit. We're really open to any person. So from, him, from here onwards, uh, what we're planning to do. Uh, so we would like to complete the, the whole network of uh, the Carmel hiking. I mean, we have many more than just these 50 kilometers. We have hundreds of kilometers of hiking paths. As the one you will do tomorrow, you're doing a section of three kilometers. And in total, you have uh, about 200, I guess. Значит, э, на их планы на будущее. Они хотят закончить э, разметку всех пешеходных маршрутов. Э, в Хайфе порядка 200 километров. Мы завтра делаем участок всего 3 километра. Они хотят это сделать и сделать так же, как. And what is this network? How it looks like? So, uh, these were the original uh, uh, paths that uh, the SPNI, this uh, Society for Nature Protection in Israel, they created these trails until uh, the, the end of the 2000 to 2010. After that, they decided that no more trails will be created in Haifa, and they finished here. But actually, what you see here in orange are the paths that already existed that are not marked, but are already there, and we would like to mark them as well. And this is in green what we created, the Haifa One Israel, which connects most of the already existing uh, paths that they were marked. In yellow, what you see here are paths that we identified that uh, we would like to develop. And one of these, if I'm not mistaken, let me see. This one is the, the one you will be hiking tomorrow. Так, вот желтым они отметили те, которые они уже нашли, придумали, да, пешеходные маршруты, и те, которые они будут тоже в дальнейшем отмечать. Вот кусок, который он показал, это то, чем мы запрограммируем. So we hope that backpackers that uh, are doing uh, in Israel, we call it doing the Israel National Trail, because it's a, a one in a lifetime experience, once in a lifetime, uh, it's about uh, one month of hiking, and we would like to extend this month in another three or four days, 
Uh, we would like the people that do this uh, task that will also come to Haifa and do one circle around Haifa. And we will continue developing ecotourism at the end of 2017, next year. Значит, в Израиле люди совершают путешествия по Израилю, называется Doing the Ritual, и это в течение месяца обычно происходит. Они хотят, чтобы это было увеличено на несколько, на 4 дня, чтобы люди могли хорошо войти и посмотреть хайф. Они этим занимаются. So what is this ecotourism? We identify the few leading uh, uh, ideas, concepts that could promote ecotourism in Israel. So, first and most important is the natural reserves. Uh, we were thinking that there are some places around Haifa that are really, really important and could be preserved and developed as the tourism uh, locations. Uh, the urban, uh, for, for example, here what you see in the picture, this is a plant that grows only in uh, one wadi and there is no more in the world. It's the only place on earth where this plant grows and it's very impressive, it's about this big, I mean it's the height of one meter and a half and it's a big uh, circle. Sorry. Значит, вот это вот растение, это оно уже все только в одном месте на всей планете, в этой ваде, в этом ваде and we would like to have uh, campsites like you see in Europe. In most cities in uh, Western Europe, you have campsites within the urban region. And in some cities, you have them very, very close to the city. In Haifa, there is none. In Haifa, you see campgrounds that are not campsites, campgrounds where you are allowed to camp, uh, which is just a piece of land. And this is what you have in the Carmel Park which is uh, about 10 kilometers from Haifa. Значит, они хотят создать заповедники с этими деревьями. Также они хотят создать городские кемпинги. Городские кемпинги есть игрок, это специально оборудованные площадки. В Хайфе ничего подобного нет. В Хайфе, даже не в Хайфе, а в 10 километрах от Хайфа, есть место, где просто можно поставить палатку. Okay, we had also a watchtower and we would like to develop also an education center. And in total, what we would like to achieve at the end of 2018, maybe a bit later, is a nature reserve uh, which would be declared by the municipality, urban nature reserve. So this was the idea how we would like to achieve this nature or how it should look like. I mean strategically how the city of Haifa should address nature uh, inside its area. And of course we did not do this alone. We had a lot of help from uh, organizations and uh, private people that really came and helped. Okay. We can skip this. These are all the good people that helped. And if you would like to join us, uh, you will find us on uh, Facebook. You will find the Haifa Wadis Trail. And you will find the Carmelist group. Okay, it's uh, in three languages. You will see it on Facebook. Uh, so you're very welcome to join us online. And if you have any questions uh, about uh, the lecture before I pass to the hike tomorrow, Please ask now. А если вы хотите присоединиться вот то, что только что было, это вы можете там группа в Фейсбуке. Если есть какие-то вопросы, то вас спрашивают. Your shop. Okay. So uh, about the hike tomorrow. I'll show you uh, how does the tools look like. Сейчас нам покажут, как будут выглядеть наши инструменты. So we have these tiny tools, and uh, we have also bigger ones that are not here because it's too heavy to carry. So. We'll bring them for tomorrow only. <laughs> so this tool, this tool is cutting uh, small branches, really up to the thickness of a finger. It cuts also fingers, so be careful. And the ones that will be working with this will have to work on uh, all the thorns that are growing inside the path. А те, кто будет работать с этим, должны будут также обрезать колючки, которые растут э, на, ну, в направлении к пешеходной тропе. Еще он сказал очень осторожно, пальцы тоже. And we have this tool, which is a saw. With this you can uh, saw out uh, bigger branches up to this side. I cut 
uh, pieces like this of trees that fell on the path. And we can cut them even if it's big like this, it just takes a long time. And we have also bigger tools, as I said, that are used for uh, the really difficult uh, uh, places where we have these big trees falling or uh, a lot of uh, plants growing inside the path. And don't be afraid from uh, getting dirty, just be prepared. So for tomorrow, I would like all of you to have closed shoes, like the ones I'm wearing today. It can be any kind of closed shoe, but it has to be closed. Don't come with sandals or uh, flip-flops, because you, you will suffer. And uh, I suggest to come with long pants. If you do not bring long pants, you will be full of blood in the evening. And do not forget to bring uh, hats, all of you that have hats. Uh, most of the way is the shadow, it's shadowed, but a uh, few parts uh, are open. And if you're staying a long time in the sun, you will have burns like what I have because of this week. And the most important thing, the most important thing, bring three liters of water. And I'm not kidding, three liters, it's not really a lot. Uh, if you're staying for three, four hours outside, it will be very, very difficult without all this water. <laughs> so, uh, any questions about tomorrow? Are we all excited to go tomorrow and create a new style? I would like to present also, I would like to present a few members here that uh, some of them will join us also tomorrow, members of the NGO. Uh, this is Gil, uh, Mao, uh, Natalie. Uh, are you joining us tomorrow? You're joining? So Mao, raise your hand. And Mao will be joining, he will lead the painting group. And the painting group is the group that has to bring clothes that are ready to throw away. And <laughs> we'll have also a picnic uh, about, at about uh, 12 o'clock we'll have a picnic so you have something to expect for <laughs> And we'll start uh, at uh, 8 o'clock exactly, so be there 10 minutes before because you have to register. Tomorrow morning I'll pass this form. This is a form that removes the legal responsibility from us because we cannot take legal responsibility on you. You have your own insurance. So please, in the morning, come uh, 15 minutes uh, before the high, so you can all sign this. Don't all come at 8 o'clock and say, I'll be the last one, because it doesn't work like this. So be 15 minutes before, so you all have time to sign it. And until today we had, uh, I guess, about 90% of success with people surviving the hikes. So most of you will come back. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs>
And this is the paramedic. Mar is the paramedic. Uh, so uh, if you're if you're injured uh, during the hike, we'll leave you on the way, and he will come and collect you. So thank you very much, and uh, I hope to see you tomorrow morning at quarter to eight. А он сказал.